Hello everybody and we're here with uh, Orlando Pearson and we're going to have the post uh, show interview from a scandal in Nova Alba which was performed at Undershore. Uh, hi Orlando. Hi Steve, you well? Very well sir and uh, we can actually see on the screen, this is one of the scenes, I'm just going to play it for a moment just to get a feel for uh, the, the atmosphere there at uh, uh, Undershore. I know nothing more about it other than that it was delivered by hand so it was neither stamp nor postmark on the envelope. So what motivates whoever wrote this, this is accusatory drama? Someone wants to discredit the present king and trailed him here to do so. So it was, a, it was a fantastic evening. It was a very busy one for you, uh, Orlando. You're the author, you're a playwright, you're the actor, and now you're, you're doing the interview. Yeah, uh, it was, it, it's been a busy couple of days, but I think Undershaw was a fantastic cause. I, I, I mean, every time I go down there, I'm impressed by what they do. I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to be raising money for. And, and how did you get into writing Sherlock Holmes stories? I first started reading Sherlock Holmes when I was 13 and my only regret with them is that there aren't more of them. The 56 short stories and four novels is not nearly enough so I wanted to do my bit to, uh, to, to increase the numbers. And I've written 30 short stories now and I've started turning some of them into plays. This, this is the one that's been performed most often. It's now had two productions and four performances I'm hoping to do more like that. And how do you go about the, the, the process of writing the Sherlock Holmes story? Well, there are various methods that I use. Um, I, one of the main methods I use is to take an existing story and put Sherlock Holmes into it. Uh, and that was a little bit what I did uh, with, with this one. This, this takes the story of Shakespeare's Macbeth and has Sherlock Holmes investigate whether the version you see when, whenever Shakespeare's Macbeth is put on is, is actually justified. That's an interesting technique. Um, at, you know, we're in the house of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uh, in, uh, in Undershaw, it was performed. Um, has, did Conan Doyle do anything like this? Well, you'll remember that in The Crooked Man, uh, Conan Doyle is quite open that it, it's really the story of David and Bathsheba from the Bible. Uh, and he, 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 he isn't quite sure which book of Samuel it's from, but it is from the book of Samuel. It is the story of David and Bathsheba. And um, Colonel Barclay is in the role of, is in the role of David in, 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 that, in, in that story. Uh, and I think Conan Doyle did live particularly from the Bible. I think there, there are similarities between the story of Theseus and the Minotaur and the Hound of the Baskervilles, uh, and the, 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 st the story of the final problem has a lot in common with the Last Supper and, and the crucifixion story. Uh, and I've done, I find Sherlock Holmes in the Bible works very, very well. Um, I, 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 the, the, the certainty that with which religion is presented and the certainty with which Conan Doyle presents, or ha um, Conan Doyle has Sherlock Holmes present facts is, 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 is a very good match. So I've done, I've, I've, I've done a, a, verse, a, a sequel to The Hound of the Baskervilles, which plays very strongly on, on the link to the Theseus legend. And I've done versions of the Christmas story and of the crucifixion story, um, which, which feature Sherlock Holmes. And, I, I, and I've got the approbation of my vicar for that. My vicar loved both of those. Uh, did, did do any current events trigger uh, any elements to the plot in the play? In this one, yes, I wrote, I wrote this originally, it's one of my first stories, this is the second story that I wrote at the end of 2014. And at the time, the Jimmy Savile story was just coming out. For those who don't live in the UK, Jimmy Savile was a pop show presenter. And he was famed, he, 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 was, he had a knighthood, uh, and he had used to have Christmas lunch with the Prime Minister. Um, so he, he was a very well-known figure. He, he raised millions for charity. Uh, and after he died, it emerged that he'd been abusing children for years. Uh, and people 
either were too foolish to realize or chose to close their eyes to what was going on. And my story picks up on that, particularly in the last scene. And there's more recently, and it, it, this is a theme that goes on and on, we've had the issue with Prince Andrew and his activities in the United States with Joseph Epstein. And I comment that it's very hard, I comment in, in a scandal in Nova Alba that it's very hard to get reliable witnesses or, or a competent judge for any, for any of these events. When you, have, when you have a scandal at such a senior level in society, it's very hard to really find out what's going on. And with, with, the, with the Savile scandal, they originally pointed a judge to investigate who, who clearly wasn't competent. So I can't help believing that's an establishment plot. And um, what, what do you look for in a, in a work of literature to, to make it suitable for one of your stories? Well, my degree was in literature, so I've got quite a good selection of things that I can choose from. But I, I tend to look for, some, for a well-known story with a mystery attached to it. And I did originally, when I, when I wanted to link Sherlock Holmes with Shakespeare, uh, I, want, I originally looked at Julius Caesar, which was a play I studied very closely. But there, Julius Caesar is murdered on stage. There's no, there's no mystery as to who did it. Whereas uh, with Macbeth, Macbeth is murdered off stage. So it's not clear who's done it. Um, and I, I, afterwards, I found out James Thurber had done something similar. He, tur he turned Macbeth into quite an amusing Agatha Christie story. He's, he very much sat, he sent up Agatha Christie. Uh, when I wrote this one, I found the more I wrote, the more serious it became. Even uh, as, as we did from the topics I've discussed, it becomes quite a serious story. I think for a serious story for Shakespeare, I think you can't have anyone else but Sherlock Holmes investigating. And, and what do you think Shakespeare would have made of uh, last night's performance? I think he'd love the sound effects. The sound effects he'd have given his eye teeth for. Uh, we, we had a professional sound man doing it and that they, they are brilliant. Uh, I think he, when you read Macbeth, there's a scene just after the discovery of the king's body, where it looks about to turn to who done it. They're all dis discussing who who'd actually stabbed King Duncan. Uh, but of course, there were no detective stories in in the in the 17th century, and Shakespeare was was writing to a brief. So the, he, the King James the First or James the Sixth of Scotland had just come to the throne. And he claimed succession from the successor of Macbeth. So James, Shakespeare wrote his, his, his play about Macbeth to introduce Macbeth and, and show what a good chap James I was. But actually, it's quite historically inaccurate. The real live Macbeth was a Scottish king. He was, he was, Scotland was called Alba. That was the Celtic name and the Roman name for Scotland at the time. Uh, he was king of Alba for. Uh, 17 years, uh, and that's the, the, his length of reign is picked up in my play. And he made a, a pilgrimage to Rome um, to see the Pope. Uh, and when he came back from Rome to Scotland, which can't be an easy journey in the 11th century, where he, he, he went back on the throne and continued as king. So he must have had something going for him. And my version of the Macbeth legend is much closer to the historical reality. And I expect over time, my version of Macbeth will push Shakespeare's out of the repertoire because my, mine's much more accurate. Um, that's, 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 that's a bold claim to push Shakespeare out. I, I love that. Um, have you got any other literary um, efforts in the pipeline? Yeah, uh, I've just done a story with, about Death in Venice. So Death in Venice is best known as a film. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a Visconti film and it, it, the... Um, the film version uh, ha is, is, is about, features Gustav Mahler, the composer, uh, and I, I have a version of it which links the story of Death in Venice to uh, another, another of the scandal stories, the scandal in Bohemia. In, 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 he, the, the King of Bohemia plays a role in my version of uh, in, in my version of Death in Venice. It also links up with the Cinderella story, so it, it's it's quite a lively mix. And it has the same, it has the same features of Macbeth, and th there is a bit of a mystery to it, and it, it bears retelling. I think most stories are improved by the addition of Sherlock Holmes. I think the fans that 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 that, that watch the video um, of the play, which is uh, uh, up on on the website now, um, will get a feel for it. Uh, it's twenty five minutes long, um, and it's relatively um, 
easy to set and stage because essentially you, you really only need two chairs. Who do you think the, the, the play is most appropriate for? I'm producing a series of plays. I've now written over 30 short stories and uh, I'm t they, they lend themselves very well to dramatization because they mostly consist of dialogue. And as you say, the sets are very simple. And most of them, you just need two chairs and it, it is the two Baker Street chairs. Uh, if, you want to be, if you want to be a bit keener, you can have fireplaces. We, we used a couple of easels in yesterday's uh, staging in order to, put pic to pin pictures up, but everything else is very, very simple. I do think that my literary ones are very well suited to schools because they take adult themes, they treat them seriously. Uh, Conan Doyle, and in this case Shakespeare, are both authors who are studied very widely at schools. I like to think that they're entertaining, they can, read, they can be read in class, uh, and they can be acted out with the, with the minimal of preparation. And there's you can either you can either dub up the parts we did last night. So last night's play we did with three actors. There are five parts in it, so you could do it with five actors. I there's a chorus in this one as well, so you can have as many actors as you like in that. So they do lend themselves very well to classroom performance. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Orlando, and I wish you all the best of luck with the with the ongoing venture with the plays. It was a wonderful performance last night. Uh, the crowd really enjoyed it, and we had fans from from more than uh, half a dozen countries around the world dialing in as well. Um, and no doubt many more will watch the recording. So thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. It's been a pleasure.